Let's make a fantasy village with a little bit of help from printable scenery. Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff. And today I'm gonna to be printing and painting a few buildings from the Hagglethorn Hollow set available at printablescenery.com. This set of scenery is fairly well known amongst the hobby community. It's been featured on the likes of Tested with Adam Savage and made an appearance on a few episodes of Critical Role. The designer, Johnny Fraser Allen, has done an amazing job bringing an incredible fantasy aesthetic to these buildings, making it so you can look at them from every direction and see a completely different building. Alternatively, you can swap out the roofs and have a different building, giving it a lot more options for ways to use these. And every single one of them has a destroyed version of the same top, so that you can really give a whole new aesthetic every time your players visit the same buildings, and gives you a lot more use out of the same terrain pieces. And in today's episode, we're gonna be building this huge piece, the Fisherman's Hut. So to begin, we'll jump over to printablescenery.com. I was fortunate enough to be one of the earlier backers of the Hagglethorn Hollow Kickstarter, so I have access to the full collection of buildings, but you can buy them all here if you're only after something in particular. One of the best things about these models is that they come in several adjustable layers. So by printing out the first few floors of this, I can make a few different toppers that really change up its use across different boards. So I'll be making this ruined hunter's lodge as well as a ruined version of the fisherman's hut so that we can have a fully built and destroyed version of the same building. Once I've downloaded these models, I throw them into Cura and slice them up and get them ready on my 3D printer. I'll be printing all of these out on my Ender 3. This model is a few years old, but still runs beautifully. I couldn't recommend this more highly as a introduction to the 3D printing hobby. We'll be starting off with the fisherman's hut. The top layer of this prints in one piece and can actually work as a building by itself. But I will also be printing out the lower levels as well as the lower dungeon part. And once we have them printed off, we hit them all with a layer of gray primer. I just use a fairly cheap primer for this and make sure to go back and forth in small spurts so that you don't clog up any of the awesome details from these builds. Next up, using the Tamiya Colors brown spray paints to hit all of the wooden areas of this build. A lot of this I will be coating with the first layer of spray paint and then coming in and fixing up the details later on. This just saves me some time, but you could do all of this with cheap craft paints. Next up, I'll be using the Tamiya Colors sand and giving it a quick spray from a harsh top angle over all of the areas of thatching. I really like the way that this color turned out for the thatching compared to some of the stuff that I've done in the past. And I'll be doing this again for the future builds in this set. And then we have the building base layer. I've gone over some of the areas that my printer screwed up with some putty filler to smooth out the rocks. And then I've come over the whole thing again with that same cheap gray primer from my local hardware store. And again, using that Tamiya Brown to coat all of the wooden areas. Anything that goes over the edges will be fine as we'll be covering this up with paints later on. Now that we have a good base, it's time to come in and start painting on some details. I'll be using a gray primer over all of these white stones that appear on the top of the thatching. This color really makes them pop and anywhere that I go over the edge is fine as this is just a piece of terrain and it doesn't have to be perfectly painted. As long as you get a decent blocking out of all of these details, the players will be able to tell what it is from a quick look and it will add something special to the table. While we're using this grey paint, I grab out the bottom floor as well. You see, with this one, I want to make all of these stones really pop out. So we're going to go around and add a whole heap of different greys onto different random stones. Going around the entire building, picking out a random stone here and there, and covering them with this gray before moving on to another type of gray and repeating the process over the entire model. This might seem tedious, but I promise you in the end, it is absolutely worth it. Really helping to accentuate and bring out the uniqueness of this awesome architecture. Once we're done with the base piece, we're gonna repeat this on the brickwork for the rest of the model. 
helping it to really blend together and match once it all sits together in the end. Again, using as many different greys as you can get your hands on. And now we're going to clean up some of these messy edges with a brown paint. I'll be using the Citadel Paint Dryad Bark, going over all of the wooden textures and really trying to cover up anywhere that I've hit with another spray paint, as well as touching up all of these sections on the top of the building. Once I'm happy with the coverage of these wooden parts, I'm also going to go around again and make sure that all of the areas that were leaked over with another spray paint get touched up. It doesn't really matter too much if these wood colours don't blend perfectly, as they'll come together nicely once we give them all a dry brush. And now to help all of these rope sections stand out against the thatching, I'll be giving them a fairly heavy coating in Screaming Skull from Citadel. This bone colour comes out as a very nice rope and it even looks better if you decide to give it a wash. Make sure to go around and hit all of these rope sections that are holding the wooden weights down to the thatching roof, as well as any other sections of the build that you can see the rope holding things together. And now to really bring that wooden texture to life with a dry brushing of towel light ochre. The dry brushing method is essentially putting a heap of paint on your brush, removing most of it, and then just rubbing it quickly over top of these detailed areas. The raised areas of the 3D model will catch the brush and take off the highlighted paint, which will help give you some nice deep shadows in those crevices and bring that old wooden texture to life, also bringing out a lot more of the details that can be hidden away with one muted brown colour. I repeat this process over everywhere on the model that has the wooden textures. Some of these might look a little bit bright right now, but once this particular paint dries, it really comes down to a nice muted matte brown, and I love the end result. I have for a long time and forever will use these combination to make my wood effects. Again, making sure not to forget to do the same thing on the lower part of the build over all of these areas with a wooden texture. And once we're done with the wood effects, it's time to add on the render. These models are covered in a half cracked away render that covers up most of the bricks. I'll be painting over all of this with a Citadel paint called Carac Stone. You can use bone colours for this as well. With a wash, they come out quite nice. But I'm going to stick with this one so that I know for all my future models how to make them match. This also helps to cover up a lot of those areas that we went over too far with the brown paint while adding on the wooden textures. It's fairly easy to tell where the render belongs on top of the bricks as it is a much more random shape and it's risen up a couple of millimetres above the brickwork. And now to help blend all of these colours together and cover up anywhere that we might have gone over a little bit of a messy edge, we'll be using a homemade brown wash. This is made up using some water, brown paint, and a little bit of black ink. Essentially, I just shake this all up together and pile it onto the entire model, really allowing it to seep into the gaps and soak in everywhere to add a nice level of shade while also blending it all together with a nice dirty look. Once the entire section is completely coated with the wash, you just dab a little bit of the excess away with a bit of tissue paper or toilet paper and allow for the stain to blend deeper into the gaps. Then repeating the process over all of the other sides of the model, really making sure to soak it in. These washes are really what makes the model feel like an old dirty building, compared to something with a bit too much vibrance for my personal taste in terrain. Don't get me wrong, I've left a lot of models without the wash before, but the style of these builds really just screams old ruined village to me, so it really requires a wash. Then making sure to repeat this over the brickwork for the top section of the build so that everything will blend together nicely when the model is placed on the table. And once that's had a chance to dry, it's time to bring in the Tamiya soil effects, where I'm going to cover up all of these areas that look like a bit of built up dirt. And where there's dirt, there tends to be weeds. So we're going to grab out a few grass tufts 
and glue these down onto all of these dirt areas, helping to make this area look lived in and a little bit more natural. Plus, we all know that I love to add grass tufts to just about any build that I can. Using a few different variations and colours helps to bring a real natural look to this, but you can use just about anything that you have available to you. And now we have our finished fisherman's hut from Hagglethorn Hollow. This model looks brilliant on the table, and as I mentioned earlier, this model has the ability to swap out for a few different variations. So off camera, I built the ruined version of the same fisherman's hut giving us the ability to destroy the building during our campaign and show that to the players. And the best thing about this is that's not the only one that we can swap it out with. While doing the rest of this painting, I also printed out and painted a destroyed version of the Hunter's Lodge. So for this building, we're gonna be using a lot of the same methods that we did for the Fisherman's Hut, but with a few small tweaks. So let's have a recap. We printed it out on the Ender 3, gave it a prime using a cheap gray primer and then blocked in a few of the rest of these colors with these Tamiya spray paints. Then going over with the random grays to blotch out a few different bricks before coming in and dry brushing the Towelite Ochre over all of our wooden textures. With this model, I'll be pulling out the red terracotta from Game Air for all of these bricks on the roof. This is the one major difference between this and the thatched models. I love this red as it dries with a very nice matte finish and is perfect for these kind of tiled roofs. And since this will be sitting on this same base as the fisherman's hut, we're gonna wanna use the same Karak stone over all of the areas where the render bleeds over onto the brick. Then giving the entire thing a heavy dousing in our homemade brown wash. With these particular builds, I went over the entire model, not just over the brick area as the old destroyed buildings to me felt like they'd be a little bit more grungy and dirty. This wash needs to be left out in the sun for a good amount of time to dry, as it will stain your fingers and anything else that it touches. Seeing as this building looks extra ruined and has been left to nature to take back over, I came back in with a heap more tufts on this one, adding them into areas of the build where I felt like weeds would have been caught and grown over time really giving us that feeling of an abandoned, old, destroyed building. Coming together to look absolutely amazing on the full build on my tabletop. And with that, I've finished off my newest additions to my Hagglethorn Hollow build. Having been a supporter of the original Kickstarter, I've got a fair few of these builds already done. Not all of them to this same level of detail, and most of them could use a wash, but for now, I have more than enough at a perfectly acceptable level to set up my fantastical, whimsical Hagglethorn Hollow Village. These newest additions definitely make a huge difference with some massive buildings in the mix. And I love the reusability. Having these destroyed buildings is also brilliant because they can sit down on the table without the base and still look like a perfectly usable and logical building. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode and check out more of these models at printablescenery.com. And until next time, never stop making stuff. <laughs>